assume the goals of prohibition are to reduce the amount of drugs available and to reduce the demand for those drugs. I thought pot made you stupid. Now I bought into it just as much as anybody did. A lot of the information that was kept and warehoused in the Library of Congress was actually recalled and destroyed. There are no deaths from cannabis use. You can't find one. Marijuana is just a weed, and marijuana is worth more ounce for ounce than gold. This brings crime into it. The ability to make money is so huge in it. We have seen an explosion in prison construction. We have private prisons? What the f is that? How can you profit over people going to jail? There are millions of drug tests per year. It's not just urine anymore, it's, uh, it's hair and saliva. They'll do blood testing. There's industry there, this is money. They're not doing it for free. Well, politics, criminality, uh, the business of incarceration, all this comes to play in a great film from Adam Scorgi. It's called The Union, The Business Behind Getting High, and he's got a follow-up film we're going to talk about as well called The Culture High. How are you? How are you, Matt? I'm doing good. Thanks nice for having me on. My favorite part of watching you watch that clip is when it got to the point where it said, it's worth more than gold. You said, oh, that was a few years ago. It, gold has changed Gold now. has definitely changed. Like I said, we shot that, like, it would be 2007, so it's changed. Yeah. The, the, Gold's worth a little more these uh, days. But tell us about the documentary. You take an interesting uh, look at the business of pot. Well, it's interesting with the union because I only originally wanted to do an expose of the BC industry, right? And then it, it evolved into something way bigger than we ever thought. Like, recently, as I was telling you guys backstage, that it just got invited to Parliament Hill. I mean, yeah. we would have never thought that our film would get invited <laughs> to Canada's biggest political building to help educate MPs on the yeah. ramifications of Canada. You know, Adam, this brings something fascinating because I, I sort of I put a tweet out yesterday after I'd finished it. It was the second time I've seen the film, and it always affects me in a fairly fundamental way because you forget prohibition, what that actually means, why it's applied to marijuana. But I got a couple of tweets back from people that said, well, anyone who sees that film is already converted. But that's the exact opposite of what you're trying to get with this film. Always. I mean, we were, when we went into it, we weren't activists trying to make a, hit, a film to tell a message, right? We were filmmakers trying to make a great film that dove into this eyes wide shut and discovered on the way. So I think that's why the union has made such an impact and why it continues to grow is because we just took an honest look at this and this is what we found and we presented the facts. And now, I mean, I, I think going to Parliament Hill kind of shows it. Those aren't the kind of people that, you know, people thought would watch this film. Yeah. And yeah. not only, like, we didn't set up and that screening. And be converted by this kind they of film. Invite, yeah, no, after the screening, there was two or three MPs that said they were only going to be there for 15 to 20 minutes, and they ended up staying for the entire film. And they said, man, I honestly can tell you that I'm now looking at things very differently after watching your movie. And it's so interesting watching the film. You guys use some great archival footage. Uh, you talk to some very interesting and colorful people. But, you know, going back, and even today, I guess, there's so many different fear tactics used when it comes to pot and the statistics and the health hazards. It really educated me. Why do, why do people use fear tactics with pot? Like, it's <laughs> well, it's a, it's a big part of what we want to talk about with our follow-up film, The Culture High, is that a lot of the times people are just stuck in their rut in their community, or like blue team and red team, right? And a lot yeah. of the times they don't even understand why they're arguing these points. <laughs> right. This came up at, at Parliament <laughs> Hill when we were there. A lot yeah. of times they said, you know, even sometimes we're signing off, they're like, why do we feel so strongly for these when they've never really done the research? So a lot of the times because of the environment you're in, you're like, well, that's what I've been raised to do, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So I have the powers yeah. at be to yeah. talk about it in that way. Well, and cigarettes are legal. That's one thing that's yeah. always and struck alcohol. a chord with me. But cigarettes, you know, it, it is a fact that they, they kill people. Yeah. Yet it's government run. And, and get subsidies from the government, too. Absolutely. So why? what is the excuse that pot is illegal? Well, now there's so many. That's what we try to get at with the unions, that there's so many businesses in place now that kind of help things to keep the way they are, mm -hmm. right? Law enforcement, private prison, which is why you're seeing guys like Larry Campbell and yeah. Leap and stuff. They're the now coming out with guilty. prison, Adam, was a shocker to me. I had no idea uh, that there was a business based around incarcerating people in the United States. And of course, a huge amount of the prison population is people that have convictions for marijuana infractions. One in six, they still say, is in there for breach of probation for marijuana because it's the easiest one to find in a drug test. 
it's it, it it trust me when we discovered all this stuff yeah we couldn't believe that this wasn't out well like, you don't like, think about it the building of the prison the running of the prison which is being privatized now and all this is making somebody money along well no they also get money for inmates coming in and out right that they get money from the government like how many inmates are in there they get right. so there's an, an incentive to keep them flowing in there right now of course like we tried to explain the film that's not the only reason they're being built but these no. things all play a part especially when you see that the prison guard union is a huge supporter of certain Democrat or Republican parties in the yeah. United States all the time. So our views being swayed to it's like a money maker. Ways, it's a total money maker. Okay, I mean, let's talk about the follow up film though. The uh, culture uh, high. The culture high. Uh, tell us what this is going to focus on. Well, the the union really talked about the business side of the cannabis industry, and this one we're really looking at the global cultural shift that you're starting to see when people look at the cannabis industry. Yeah. It's not as easy as saying who the bad guys are and who the good guys are anymore, and you're seeing that just in everything now like war isn't like it was during the world war where it was right. like where it was it good was, guys bad guys yeah. easy you know now people are looking like well there's political agendas and there's incentives you're not looking so it's the same here and the kind of people that are coming out now talking about these issues are fascinating even to us right like yeah. former presidents former drug czars former dea agents like <laughs> I'm just excited to sit down with these people because when yeah. I sat down with some of the people from the union, some of the doctors and ex-cops, like I didn't look at anything the same. So in the culture high, we're stepping it up now and we don't have to, the union, we made the film and then we just tried to find distribution. Yeah. This time distribution's in place. We've got a distribution deal with phase four films. Super Channel's already pre-bought it. We just have a gap, the small gap, which we're trying to get on Kickstarter so that we can get a theatrical release as well. That would be fascinating because I, I think you touched on, on part of the issue here is when you see a movie like this and you understand all the politics and the machinations that have gone in place to, to create this prohibition around this, you start to wonder about other things. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist by yeah. any stretch of the imagination, but I think there is a certain fear on that governmental level that if you rip that veil off of people's eyes, what else does it lead to? You know, what kind of things do people well, question next? I, I think you're dead on. That was actually a, an interesting comment that we got whenever we screened the union, because it's screened at colleges and universities, and is the one comment we almost got from every room is they said, I didn't just learn about cannabis, I really learned about our culture and how we're able to persuade people into one decision or another based on what they see in the media and everything yeah. else. And that was something that we never... Scare the hell out of them! Yeah. Well, it's, it was the question you posed on the street. Is it a gateway drug? Yeah. Most people say yes, but they don't know why because it's yeah. kind of just been put in their heads. Well, even when you ask them, she's like, I don't know why, but I know it is. It is. Yeah. Well, that right? criminalization has led to ignorance because people don't know the truth. They don't understand what it is that they're actually talking about because we can't have an open conversation about something that's illegal. It, it, uh, it really, when it came out and we were finished and we saw the first cut, we're like, wow, this could actually like change people's opinions and things, because that wasn't our goal going oh, in. Oh, you dreamy fool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, you know, and then for a while it did the normal, didn't get DVD deals, yeah. and I looked like... The Canadian the, film circle. Oh, yeah. and I looked, I looked crazy. I dumped all this money and sold my house and borrowed a whole bunch of money from my dad to do it. And then now that it's all coming through, people are like, man, you're a genius. Here. I'm like, I'm no genius. I just, yeah, at that point, I was so far in, that was the only way to get back out, right? right. I had to see it through all the way. It's that moment in a well, poker game that, where you go. It's definitely <laughs> a conversation starter. You can check out the union. By the way, you can uh, go to the web, Adam's website to find out more about the follow-up film. As uh, Adam mentioned, there's a Kickstarter project, which is to help support films getting made. Yep. You can find out more info and donate there, too. And you will be seeing the culture high guarantee, but how cool would it be to... Uh, to get theatrical release and have more people see it and talk about it and have this discussion one way or the other everybody should have an opinion and about have your this name and in the it credits should be well too. formed and you get oh, your name yeah. in the credits depending if you on contribute? what level you buy you contribute so not only do you get to directly affect a film that you might want to see and help put it to the theater but you can have your name in the credits to be like wow I helped put it there could and I call myself the dragon yeah, and get that you, in the whatever credits? name you want whatever <laughs> name you want <laughs> Why so, the dragon, so I'll look Mike? for the dragon back really? for today on Kickstarter yeah. I'll be waiting for that <laughs> oh, okay we're going to take it. a quick break